Here in the Kuba Gimel, today's email comes to us from Mordechai Ashkenazi from Munsi. He says, we would like to dedicate today's shir in honor of our wonderful Zoom friends. These are the children that watch the Zoom shir live every single day. Akiva Solway from Ramat Bet Shemesh, Gedali Saznik from San Francisco, Moishi Apter from Toronto, Shmuley Lemmer from Kensington, New York, and Yoel Bergman. Says Mordechai Ashkenazi, we're impressed by their maturity and commitment to learning the daf. When I was their age, I kept busy by listening to music on a 90-minute Memorix cassette tape playing in my fancy Sony Walkman that even had order reverse. Mazel Tov, I'm being Messiah Mary and we should be Zoycha to continue to share many more Yoimis and learn many Davim together. Amen. Thank you, Mordechai Ashkenazi. Says the Mishnah Dav Kuv Gimel, if you have a violin or one of the chord snaps and it happens to be you're in the Beis Hamidus, you're a levy, you're permitted to repair it. You can make a knot, but you cannot start out, take a violin out of the box and set the chords on Shabbos. It's only if it broke on Shabbos. According to Chachamim, it's also to make a knot on Shabbos because this consists of machshiri mitzvah. It's preparation for a mitzvah. It's not the actual mitzvah. And therefore, it's, they hold it's also to do machshiri mitzvah on Shabbos with a, the eraisa, which making a knot is the eraisa. The eitzah is, you make an aniva, you make a bow. According to Rabbi Yehuda, there's no difference between a bow and a regular knot. A bow is also is to the eraisa. Rabbi Leza says, machshiri mitzvah, preparation for mitzvah, is a mutter even to start out from scratch, but there are certain conditions that make it usher. Machlaik is what exactly is mutter? According to Rishim and Lazar, you let to take the cord and wrap it around the, the top and the bottom, because like this, you have the best sound that the violin is able to produce. According to Chachamim, they said that's usher, it's xera, you might come to start a new violin, and therefore just make a knot. If the cord rips all the way at the end, over there, you could get away with making a bow. It would sound fine. Reb Shimon says, we have to be geyser to make a knot also. Says the Mishnah. If a kayan has a wart, he, it's a mom, he's puzzled for the avayda. So if a kayan has a wart, you're allowed to cut it off in the base amigdash with your hand, but not with a clean, not with a vessel. The problem is, and the Gemara is going to discuss this at length, there's a Mishnah Psachim that tells us that it's usher to get rid of a wart. So what do we do? We have four pirushim, according to Rebbe Lezer. It's motor, but how do we explain the Chacham? The word tells us one shot is that we're de- dealing with a wart that's moist and alive. And our Mishnah says you could remove it with your hand. The Mishnah Psachim is talking about removing it with a cleave. The Gemara is daichet because Rebbe Lezer says that over there we're talking about shvos, the iser durabanan. And therefore it can't be moist and it can't be with a cleave. That would be Issa de Raisa. Or, the second shot is, both the Mishnah over here and in Pesachim are talking about that you remove it with your hand. And our Mishnah is talking about where it's dried up already. It's not alive and therefore you can remove it. The one that argues says that if it's dry, you can remove it with a clean. Why does our Mishnah say you can, re- you can only remove it by hand? The third shot is, both of the Mishnahs are talking about a moist wart. And you remove it with your hand they were only matter or shvos of the Rabbanon for the Beis HaMikdash in the Beis HaMikdash. So the Gemara asked a question from the case that we had earlier in the Masechta a number of times. Somebody's reading a Sefer on a stoop and part of the Sefer falls out of his hand but part of it remains in his hand. He's allowed to roll it up and bring it to himself. The Gemara understands that that's like something for the Beis HaMikdash since he's reading from a Sefer Kaddish. And the Gemara says that's not a good kasha because the stoop that we're discussing is a Carmelis. So worse comes to worse, he might come, if the entire thing falls out of his hand, he might come to carry it. He's only carrying into a caramelist that's only used to the rabbi. But what's a problem here is that you're permitted to take the carbon Pesach and roast it right before Shabbos. Typically, you're not allowed to put something into the oven right before Shabbos. I mean, you might stoke the coals. Over your ladder, why? Even though it's outside of Yisamidosh, it's for the Yisamidosh, outside of Yisamidosh, and you're allowed to. So Rav Yosef holds that that's not a big deal because since we're dealing with groups of people, groups of people are reason they're going to remind each other, they know what they're doing, they're not going to make mistakes. Abaya, on the other hand, holds, we only see the concept of his reason when it comes to Kohanim. Kohanim is reason. But since all of Klai Yisrael are bringing Karim Pesach, there is going to be a mistake somewhere. The fourth shot to explain the contradiction in the Mishnah is over here, it says you can remove a wart. The Pesachim says you can't remove a wart. Says Rav, we're going according to Rav Lezer, that machshiri mitzvah, you could be mechal Shabbos for machshiri mitzvah for preparation for mitzvah. 
However, he agrees that where you can, you must do it in a better way. So over here, since you could get away with doing it by hand, do it by hand. In fact, that's why if a Kayan has a wart, we ask, we ask his friend to remove it with his teeth. So we have a friend and teeth, that's a way to go, to do it in a lesser iser. Even though it's a Durabanan, because the way to remove it is by hand, but since you might come to do it with a Kli, which is the rest we ask you to do it through a friend with his teeth. Now, if, he, if a person were to remove the wart by himself, according to Rebbe Lezer, it's always a deraisa, even by hand. According to Chacham, only with a kli is deraisa, even if his friend does it. Says the Mishnah, if there's a kayan in the Beis HaMikdash, and he has a wound, he could wrap a bandage around his wound, because it's not their heiress to perform the avoida with blood dripping out of his finger. And the Mishnah uses an example of using a gemi, and a gemi is something that has healing powers to it. As long as he's careful that by wrapping the reed around his finger, he doesn't cause himself to bleed. Now, wrapping a reed around the finger might consist, you think, as wearing clothing, and there's a certain amount of garments that a kind can wear. If he wears anything extra, his avoid is possible. So says the Gemara, if you wear, you put a bandage in an area that typically you have another beged, big de kuna, this would be a big problem, would be possible. Even one hair's breadth would passel the avoid. Now, if it's in a place that there's no begotten, let's say on your fingers, so according to one Lashon Rabbi Huda, it doesn't make a chatzitza, it's not considered extra begotten. According to Rava, in the second Lashon Rabbi Huda, even a three and three is considered, three three beged is considered yitur begotten, extra beged. And according to Rabbi Huda, if you have a small belt that's chashav, that's considered yitur begotten, have a wonderful day.